In 2049, humanity is actively colonizing Mars, and the wealthiest individuals can leave the increasingly polluted Earth for $1 million. We meet a student named Walt who has dreamed of going to Mars since childhood. He's submitting his 37th video application to participate in the Covey Industries Student Mars program, created by billionaire Leon Covey to send students to Mars. He's trying to prove that he's perfect for any job on the planet. However, Walt's previous 36 applications were rejected due to his lack of necessary knowledge and skills. Walt works as an assistant to a robot barista named Gary on the college campus but remains hopeful that his latest application will be approved. One evening, Walt goes to a college party, and meanwhile, we meet a smart and wealthy student named Sophie. Alone in her room, she communicates via video call with her boyfriend Calvin, a young scientist who, along with his family, works on contract on Mars and is scheduled to return to Earth in nine months. Walt, accidentally mistaking Sophie's room for the restroom, notices she's talking to someone from Mars and approaches closer. Are you on Mars? Go! What are you doing? Get out! Sophie clearly isn't pleased to see a stranger in her room and promptly shoes him away, while Walt, stepping back, accidentally breaks her Wi-Fi hotspot. Heading outside, Walt meets another girl named Ginny, and there's an instant connection between them. Walt recalls that she's studying astrophysics, a course he once took, although he's since changed courses 16 times. Ginny reveals that she's heading to Mars in just 7 hours, though she's still unsure if she should go. They decide to spend the remaining time walking and discussing how polluted Earth is and how beautiful life on Mars could be. Walt shares his dream, regretting that once again tomorrow, the shuttle will leave Earth without him. He jokes that since his application isn't getting approved, and he doesn't have the money for a ticket, the only way to get to Mars is to stow away in an air duct. At dawn, Ginny wonders why Walt is so fixated on Mars, and he confesses that he's driven by a thirst for adventure. However, after 36 rejections, he starts to think that They don't need extraordinary mediocrity. Yeah, that's funny. Soon, Walt and Ginny share a kiss, but they're suddenly interrupted by the sound of a notification on Ginny's phone, and she realizes it's time for her to leave. She bids farewell to Walt, stating that he convinced her that Mars truly holds a new life for her. In bewilderment, Walt realizes that he's the one who caused him to lose Ginny forever. Immediately after the shuttle departs, Ginny and Walt exchange messages, but gradually their communication dwindles. A month later, Walt reaches out to the staff of the Covey Industries Student Mars program and requests a review of his latest application. He pleads for its approval but receives yet another rejection, along with an offer to buy a ticket at a discounted price of $937,000. In despair, Walt heads to work, and the robot Gary informs him that one of the customers has occupied a table for over five hours without placing an order. Walt recognizes her as Sophie and sees that she's visibly upset about something. Walt approaches her with a cup of coffee, stating that without paying for the drink, she won't be able to stay in the establishment any longer. He also inquires about how her boyfriend is doing on Mars. Sophie reveals that Calvin has extended his contract, and now they won't be able to see each other for several more years. Then Walt settles comfortably at her table and tells Sophie about his girlfriend who also flew to Mars and now isn't responding to his messages. In turn, Sophie confesses to Walt that she and Calvin have been together for eight years and that they had a plan, a year apart, after which he returns to Earth. She finishes college, and then together, he is a terraformer and she is an ecologist. They launch algae-based earth cleaning technology. Walt tries to help Sophie reunite with Calvin and suggests sneaking onto the shuttle through the air duct. But to Walt's immense surprise, Sophie declares that she has money for a ticket but doesn't want to fly because of her fear of flying. Still, Walt manages to persuade her to go to her boyfriend and she finally buys a ticket for tomorrow's flight. Goodbye, Walt. At the end of the workday, Walt receives a video message from Ginny, showing a cat that accidentally made its way into one of the rescue pods on Earth and has now become the first cat on Mars. After watching the video several times, Walt realizes that he can reach Mars just like that cat. He quickly gathers his things, says goodbye to Gary, and rushes to the Covey Industries International Spaceport, where Sophie is already preparing for departure. Walt approaches Sophie and begs her to tell the security that he's her relative so he can pass through the gates and at least watch the launch. Sophie is annoyed by his persistence, but he manages to persuade her to deceive the spaceport staff, reminding her of his childhood dream. Soon they venture deeper into the spaceport, and Walt talks incessantly, irritating Sophie even more. When they enter the elevator, she suddenly starts dancing, explaining that dancing helps her calm down. Before boarding the spaceship, they say goodbye, and Walt gives Sophie a gift, making amends for the broken Wi-Fi hotspot. The boarding completes, and while the staff closes the gates, Walt quietly sneaks into the rescue pod through the cargo hold. He immediately messages Ginny that he's flying to Mars. <laughs> Meanwhile, Sophie unwraps Walt's gift, a cute earth-shaped toy. 
However, in the moment of departure, she's so nervous that she accidentally tears it with her nails. The shuttle successfully docks with the ship, and the happy passengers board, where they will spend the next 35 days, the duration of the journey to Mars. Sophie heads to her cabin, chatting via video with her boyfriend and his relatives. Suddenly, she hears a strange noise and decides to investigate. In one of the corridors, she spots Walt. Furious at him for deceiving her to sneak onto the ship illegally, Sophie worries that he'll be discovered, potentially revealing her involvement. But Walt assures her that he won't be found and that he'll hide in the air ducts. Walt wants to message Ginny again, but Sophie snatches and smashes his phone since the ship's network is closed, and he could be easily traced. To avert any risk, Sophie takes him to her cabin and orders him not to leave under any circumstances. Suddenly, Captain Tartar appears at the door. Walt immediately introduces himself as Calvin, Sophie's boyfriend, and manages not to raise suspicion, despite wearing regular clothes instead of the specialized suit worn by all passengers. Walt claims that he and Sophie have been together for many years, and Tartar decides to introduce them to Tabby and Celeste, a couple who have been together for nine years and plan to get engaged on Mars. Before leaving Walt and Sophie alone, Tartar asks for their documents for registration. Walt admits that he didn't bring them. I knew it. You're the looks. She's the brain. Unsuspecting once again, Tartar suggests that Walt registers later with the help of an AI named Cornelia. Then Sophie finds a jumpsuit for Walt and takes him to Earl, who is supposed to print out the supposedly lost identification for him. However, Earl claims he can't help because his computer is down. To Walt's surprise, Sophie manages to fix the computer, and he receives his pass under the name Calvin. They return to the cabin, and Sophie suggests that Walt familiarize himself with Calvin's scientific work just in case since he's traveling under Calvin's identity. For the following 22 days, they maintain a semblance of normalcy, raising no suspicions, while Walt delves deeper into Calvin's background. But one day, Sophie catches Walt communicating with Ginny and accuses him of jeopardizing their plan by going online, emphasizing the risk of being detected and potentially sent back to Earth. Walt, confident that everything will be fine, announces that he plans to sneak into Earl's cabin and steal some ice cream because they don't serve it in the cafeteria, and it's precisely what he needs to relieve stress from being cooped up for so long. Sophie follows him, repeatedly reminding him that he could get caught, but in the end, they spend the evening eating ice cream and talking about the future. After some time, they attend a lecture by one of the passengers, but it turns out he's fallen ill. While everyone begins to leave, Tabby mentions stumbling upon a fascinating dissertation and suggests Calvin give a lecture on terraforming. Nervous and scared, Walt, who knows nothing about terraforming, takes the stage. Realizing he has nothing to say, he delivers a motivational speech about whether it's worth sacrificing real happiness and love for the dream of life on Mars. Walt's words prompt Celeste to propose to Tabby right there, rather than waiting until they reach Mars. Listen up everybody, mandatory engagement party in T-minus 30 minutes! Sophie arrives at the party wearing a homemade tin foil dress, impressing Walt once again with her intelligence and talent. Later, Walt presents her with a cupcake to celebrate her upcoming birthday. Walt suggests she talk to his relatives via video call, but Sophie admits that her parents died 10 years ago, and Calvin's family immediately took her in. She also notes that the real Calvin probably wouldn't have come to such a party and asks Walt to just be himself for the day. They dance and drink all night, and then, returning to the cabin, they decide to celebrate Sophie's impending birthday by venturing into open space. However, sobering up, Sophie isn't as enthusiastic about the idea, but Walt convinces her to enjoy the flight and the beautiful view of Mars. When they return to the ship, an unidentified fragment suddenly breaches its hull. Captain Tartar announces that oxygen is running out and they need to dock with the Mars orbital station as soon as possible, after which they'll head to the surface on a cargo shuttle. However, now all passengers need to present their passes, and when Walt's identification is checked against the database, it's discovered that the real Calvin is already on Mars. Sophie suggests that Walt use the air duct to avoid the inspection. She guides him through the duct, and soon they meet in one of the storage rooms on the orbital station, where Walt has already set up a tent to live in until their arrival. Sophie decides to stay with him and then sets up a projector, revealing stunning cosmic vistas. It's the beginning. During this time, they grow closer and begin to fall in love. However, the next morning, Sophie receives a notification from Calvin and goes upstairs to talk to him via video call. Calvin informs her that he and his family know about the accident and are very concerned about her safety. He then shows her the room they have prepared specifically for her arrival. This gesture deeply impresses Sophie, and she can't hold back tears of gratitude for Calvin's family's kindness and care. Then Sophie returns to Walt and declares that she can no longer help him because their relationship could ruin her life. Walt calls her a coward for living Calvin's life and not daring to act on her own, especially since Calvin's job on Mars is more important to him than her feelings and desires. Sophie, in turn, 
calls him selfish for being willing to disrupt her life simply out of a thirst for adventure. She returns his gift and leaves. Meanwhile, the shuttle delivers passengers to Mars. Walt is immediately arrested, while Sophie reunites with Calvin and her adoptive family. While Walt waits for his lawyer, Ginny unexpectedly visits him and confesses that she now has a new boyfriend, who happens to work as a guard in the Martian prison. She also brings him the same interstellar cat so Walt won't be lonely. As evening falls, Sophie joins her close ones for dinner, who happen to be discussing Walter and his illegal arrival on Mars. Sophie claims she doesn't know him. Calvin mentions that he recommended Sophie for his research team, and now they can work together. However, the new project will take 12 years, and Sophie obviously isn't ready to spend all those years away from Earth. The next day, Walter is awakened by a mysterious voice calling him closer. He obeys and, along with the cat, leaves his room, soon finding himself in Leon Covey's office. Walter can't believe his eyes when Covey appears in the office. He confesses that he has always dreamed of meeting the famous researcher. As if I... What? Covey declares that he knew from the beginning about Walter's illegal entry onto the ship and had been monitoring him all along. The board of directors plan to present this case as a security system check, send Walter back to Earth, and take legal action. However, Covey had another idea. He leaked all the surveillance camera recordings onto the network, and the videos went viral. Now, Covey wants to use an average, unremarkable guy like Walter, who managed to make an incredible journey out of curiosity and a thirst for exploring a new world, to promote his company and attract new clients and investors. Covey offers Walter a contract in which he transfers the rights to use his image anywhere in the universe, in exchange for the opportunity to stay on Mars. Walter gladly agrees. As time passes, Sophie works on her dissertation, Calvin focuses on his work, and Leon Covey and Walter promote Covey Industries. One day, Sophie spends time with her family, Calvin's mother, keenly observant, notices a subtle shift in Sophie's demeanor. That same evening, Sophie alters her foil dress to attend a party. However, Calvin, puzzled by Sophie's decision to attend the event, queries her about when she plans to join his team. In response, Sophie gently reminds him of the importance of completing her dissertation first. Nonetheless, Calvin remains adamant, asserting that the dissertation is now a relic of the past, considering Sophie's current presence on Mars and her employment status. It was supposed to be the future. My future. At the party, Walt still works as a barista, and life on Mars is nothing like he imagined. He accidentally runs into Captain Tartar, who confesses she knew about his affair from the beginning but didn't let on as per Covey's demand. Sophie finally convinces Calvin to join her, and soon they show up at the party, but Calvin immediately leaves Sophie alone and goes to talk to his colleagues. Soon, Walt approaches the upset Sophie and informs her that Ginny has found a new boyfriend and apologizes for using her. He presents her with a new gift, a list of things she can contribute to Earth's preservation, and the same toy, but already stitched up. As Sophie unwraps the gift, Calvin's mom approaches her and says she will always be part of their family, regardless of whether things work out with Calvin or not. Sophie doesn't want to betray Calvin, but she feels relieved by his mother's words, realizing how distant they've become. Finally, Sophie decides to break up with Calvin, while Covey receives an offer to go to the Tiny Planet series, located in the main asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter. Moreover, Walt will be the first person to set foot on it. Walt agrees, and Covey warns him that he should warn all his loved ones because he won't see them for several years. First, Walt wants to contact Sophie, but the robot announces that she is no longer registered as a resident of Mars and that she is returning to Earth with the garbage ship. Walt runs out of Covey's office and sneaks on board the shuttle, where he finally reunites with Sophie. He confesses his feelings for her and declares that life on Earth now appeals to him much more than adventures on Mars and they share an impassioned kiss. What do you think awaits Sophie and Walt on Earth? Will they stay together and be able to help the dying planet? Share your thoughts in the comments below, give it a like, and subscribe to the channel. See you in the next videos.